What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another training breakdown from Functional Bodybuilding Headquarters. I'm Marcus, and you are tuned in because you want to learn more about how to train effectively and understand the functional bodybuilding method. There's three of us training today. We got two guests who are not new to the channel. Sean is here. Megan's here. Both of them have been around the functional bodybuilding game for years. I met Shauna probably in 2011, maybe 2012. I owned a CrossFit gym that about five miles down the road. She showed up. She was a Lululemon employee at the time. And I think the Lululemon employees got free workouts at the gym. We were happy to take Lululemon's money, and we were happy to have Lulu, uh, Lululemon employees come and get to know us. And within probably two years, she was coaching at the gym, and within f five years, she was like, like a full, like, dedicated convert to to our system. And she's been with us ever since. So I'm very grateful for that. And here she is, doing some dumbbell external rotations and a variety of other prep movement. So we're getting started for our upper body pulling session. So today is about upper body movements, specifically pulling, using these three uh, kind of stations to get us ready. External rotations for the shoulder, hammer curls or bicep curls to sort of warm up the elbow flexors because we're going to be doing pulling. Now they're using dumbbells to do their prep. I chose to do some cable. When you use a dumbbell, the contraction at the bottom of the external rotation, when you're first moving against the dumbbell against gravity is like the bottom half is the heaviest and the toughest. When you get to the top and the dumbbell is sitting right over your knee, there's almost no tension whatsoever. Meanwhile, when you're using a cable like I'm using, when I'm at the bottom, there's really no tension or very, I don't even get all the way to the stretch position under tension. But at the top, when the muscles are in the shortened position, the contracted position, I'm getting the peak tension of the cable. So they're kind of inverse or opposite. Uh, and it makes sense to do both in your training. Um, and I'm just experimenting with that position right now during prep. Next up, now the format for today's training was going to be use a period of time to build up to a heavy set of five in the strict pull-up. Now, heavy set of five could mean a lot of different things for different people. You might be like, I can barely do five reps at my body weight. I think that's where Megan was today, in fact. So she did body weight max effort sets for three sets of five. She got five reps, maybe five, five, and then four on her last one. But she was pulling her own body weight over the bar as best she could for five reps. Shauna looks like she was working up to maybe 10 pounds, uh, a dumbbell that she was putting between her legs. So those were her weighted sets. She built up to five there. And I had been doing this for a number of weeks and I knew that I wanted to at least start my top sets at 60 and I went 60, 65, 70. So my goal was to hit 70 on my, my final set. Now, once those heavy sets were done with about two minutes of rest in between, 90 seconds to two minutes rest in between, the idea was to get, do a back off set or do, do something where we lowered the tension and we built more reps in, more time under tension, but lower total tension or load. Now, again, this could mean different things for different people. Like if you're barely getting your body weight over the pull-up bar for five reps, then how are you gonna do a max set from there? Well, you're gonna add some assistance and this, the assistance is gonna come in the way of a band. And that's what Megan was doing. She did a banded set where she, I think got somewhere close to 10 reps. I went from a weighted chin up of, or weighted pull up of 70 pounds for five to a body weight. And I did a max effort set. I did 21 reps on my, on my set. <laughs> Okay, moving on. We went from pull-ups into something called uh, a superset. What we did today was an agonist superset. And an agonist superset with an emphasis in the first exercise on a smaller muscle group, then the second exercise, a compound movement. There's lots of different ways to superset exercises. You can superset two movements that have nothing to do with one another. An antagonist superset would be like opposing muscle groups. So that would be more of like bench press 
and a pull. This is an agonist superset, meaning that this first exercise, which we did, which was a prone incline bench, dumbbell, reverse fly. This is gonna target the rear delts. And then we went right into a seated wide grip cable row. And that seated wide grip cable row is almost an identical movement to the rear delt fly. There's a lot of the same overlapping movement pattern there. So we fatigue the rear delts and then we go do um, a cable row, which also fatigues the rear delts, but we're getting to use other muscles. So it's kind of a way of like overloading those rear delts, but getting two movements back to back to just build a lot of intensity in that area of the body. So the reps were basically uh, do 10 to 15 rear delt flies and then go do 10 to 15 a seated cable rows. And you also see this kind of technique cue where on the on each rep, we're rotating our shoulders forward and rounding the upper back. And why would you do that? Well, I talked about this in, in, a, in a previous episode where we were actually talking about pressing, talking about, you know, you press and let the shoulders rotate forward. Same thing here. We're kind of pulling but on the rich, on the way back as we're getting the stretch we're letting the shoulders rotate forward we're working on just developing longer ranges and and in this particular movement pattern getting a deeper and a, or sort of a longer stretch of those upper back rear delt muscles as we return uh, back on the cable row so that was kind of the end of our first agonist superset and then we moved on to the second agonist superset. This is basically two back-to-back -back bicep focused bicep curl exercises. The first is a prone incline bench curl, also known as a spider curl. It's where you lay flat on your belly and kind of like a 45 or even a 30 degree bench uh, ideal for this. You can start with the dumbbells at your side in a neutral position, but when you curl up, you're supposed to go into a supinated palms up position. And because of that lean forward, this is a shortened position to contract the bicep. We then take a short break, 15 seconds, turn over. Now the bicep at the shoulder joint is sort of in, an, in a stretched extended position and that means that we're training, we're doing a superset of shortened bicep curls into lengthened bicep curls. So that was super spicy. I mean, even 20 pounds, I was starting to kind of fail with. And this is just a reminder that it's really not about the load in some of these exercises, especially in this pump training format that we're doing, where we're really trying to just work on hypertrophy and muscle building. It's about great technique, it's about control of the movements. And if you do that, then lower weights at these rep ranges and tempos are going to get you a heck of a stimulus, which I think is great because if you can train at lower weights and get it's just as good a stimulus, it's gonna keep you in the game longer, avoid some of the, the joint aches and pains and keep you durable for, for longer. Now, once or twice a week, I like to mix in what, what I would consider a conditioning format that is more relevant to our perform training track of Persist. Perform training track is going to showcase more CrossFit movement pairings and movements that I came up doing in from 2009 to 2017, uh, a, a sport that I loved and something that I learned, you know, this type of format of conditioning is just terrific for overall metabolic conditioning, uh, performance, and just for, for me, always felt really fun and drove a lot of intensity into this. The movements that we're using are the hang power clean, the toes to bar or toes to ring, and a cardio of choice. I chose the rower, uh, so did Shauna. Now the rep scheme was 20 reps on the first round, 15 on the second, then 10, then 5, and then 10 again, 15, and 20. So 20 down to 5 and then back up to 20 of hang power clean, toes to bar, and then a row of 250 to 200 meters in between every round. So there's a lot of work to do. And when you're doing 
hang power cleans and you're cycling these for something like 85, 90 reps, there's a huge upper back demand. Yeah, you're using your hips, you're using momentum to get that barbell up. That is the nature of a power clean, but to catch that bar and to lower it down and then return it back to your shoulders from the hang position, it's gonna require grip and it's gonna require your traps and your upper back to work a lot. And this is redundant from what we had done already today. We had done a lot of upper back training. We had done a lot of pulling. We had done a lot of gripping. So here, take another movement like a hang power clean at a weight that you can cycle for reps and reps and reps. And that's how we kind of overlap and overlay movements, muscle groups all together so that it makes sense. If I had chosen something like a wall ball, it'd be a great conditioning workout, but it would not touch the movement patterns that we were focused on for that particular day. And then the core exercise, a toes to bar, another big gripper. We've been doing a lot of pulling and gripping today. I like the toes to bar as a core exercise that works well on upper body pulling days. So we threw the toes to bar in and then the rowing machine, we're rowing again, rowing with that's grip, that's upper back. So hang power clean toes to bar uh, rowing is going to be a grip intensive upper back pulling intensive conditioning format. And with this number of reps, I had to put a time cap on it because this could take somebody 25 minutes or it could take somebody 15 minutes. So I, I just said, let's put a 15 minute time cap on it because I don't want everyone working beyond that. I want everybody working within their capabilities for that time frame. And it worked out beautifully. I was able to finish just inside the 15 minute cap. Shauna was quite close. She was nipping at my heels and Megan was a little bit further behind. I think for her toes to rings that she chose to do were extremely fatiguing on her um, her arms and that was what kind of slowed her up the most. And I told her that ahead of time because a toes to ring exercise is a longer cycle time than a toes to bar. She was gonna end up having to stay on those rings a lot longer and that just burns your grip up. So movement selection considerations always, you know, can make a huge difference in how long conditioning workouts take. Uh, and when I see that there's going to be a lot of variability in a conditioning workout amongst a group of people, it helps to put a time cap on things so that everyone is kind of doing the same amount of total time uh, effort work. And we don't get somebody that's like, why did this take me 30 minutes and it only took you 15 minutes? It's like, well, the goal was not to make it some big dramatic difference. I want everybody to be finishing around the same time so we can move on with our day and live to fight another day in the gym. Okay. That's it for today. If you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up, please. Comment below for the algorithm and also because I care to know what you think. If you enjoyed this format, helps me to know if we should produce more of them. I enjoyed it. And you know what? I think this, this checkered flannel situation I got going on here is pretty sick. So if you like that too, let me know. All right, I'll see you next time.